Hey, what's up guys? It's Zors. Today we're going to be taking a very brief look at polygon modeling or box modeling in 3ds Max. So first we'll go into our create panel, geometry and standard primitives. We'll create a box. I'm going to do a keyboard entry for this box and X, Y, and Z will all be zero and we'll give it a length, width, and height of 10. Then we'll click create and that is one god awful color so let's give it a um, let's say light blue so now I'm going to immediately right click on the box and we'll convert it to an editable poly now before we get going I want to give you guys a useful tip to help you out for modeling and just doing pretty much anything involving viewport navigation in 3ds Max. So let's go into sub-object mode, click that little plus to the left of editable poly. We'll go into vertex and we'll select and we'll select just any vertex we want to. And if you haven't noticed already, I'm orbiting around this one individual vertice. How I'm doing this is I go down to the orbit mode located in the bottom right corner of your screen. And we have three options here. The first is orbit, second is orbit to selection, and the third is orbit to sub-object mode. So if I were to choose just the default orbit, then I would start moving around. You're going to see this going all over the place and not really focused on the box, which isn't good for modeling. But if I change it to the third or very bottom one, orbit to sub-object mode, we start to see that I orbit directly around the sub-object or vertice that I have selected. So that's just a good hint. And how I'm orbiting is I'm holding Alt and I'm clicking down on my scroll wheel, so middle mouse, and you just kind of drag it around. To zoom is control alt and middle mouse, and then you drag up and down. And then just regular middle mouse will pan. Okay, so now let's get going. First we're going to talk about vertex sub-object mode. In vertex sub-object mode you can select the points that connect to make the faces and edges. So I'm going to hit W for my move tool and we'll just move the gizmo around so we can see that it's already starting to shape our box. Now for edge sub-object mode. First we're just going to grab two edges by control clicking on both of them and then we'll drag our gizmo around and we can see what's happening there. Let's just select one, drag it up, hit control Z a couple times to undo. Okay. Now we'll go into polygon sub-object mode and we'll just grab one of these polygons E for rotation, we can rotate them you can do this with edges as well you can scale R and of course W for move and say if I were to delete the top polygon so let's just click on it and hit the delete key now we'll go into border sub-object mode and what we can do is select the holes or the borders in the mesh. So now I have this hole in the mesh and say I can't redo for some odd reason. So what we can do is we can select border. Then we'll find our edit border stack and we'll just click cap. So now that hole is capped. Okay, next we're about to go over some basic commands for polygon sub-object mode. So let's go ahead and click there. First is extrude. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you most likely already know what extrude means, but just in case, if we don't already know that. But just to set the stage, let's click where it says Smooth and Highlights, right next to Perspective, and then we'll click Edged Faces, so we can see the edges that connect our mesh together. So let's say I select the top polygon, and we'll extrude it. Pay attention to the front, as well as the perspective viewport. And I'll hit Extrude and I'll click on this polygon, drag up. So, like scaling it is getting taller and unlike scaling, now we have the segment in the middle, so if I go into edge mode I can hit W and we can drag this out. So, with scale I won't be able to do that because I'm not creating an extra segment in between but with extrude I am. So let's hit Control Z a couple times and now for bevel. So go back into polygon sub-object mode and bevel. We can click on the polygon, drag up, and then in. 
create kind of like a slanted roof or hit control Z once and then we can click on it drag down and down again now we create this inserted portion to our mesh kind of like a really cheesy looking bowl let's undo a couple times that's control Z now say I want to extrude any given polygon a very exact amount we can do that so we'll just click on the settings box next to extrude now I can set the extrusion height to exactly 10 one thing that's also cool about the extrude settings is that we can extrude multiple polygons at the same time in different ways so we're going to select two polygons just by control clicking and go back into our extrude settings now we have the extrusion types so this is group extrudes them as a group local normal kind of like an average between by polygon and group and there's of course by polygon which is as if you extruded them separately the same amounts but it just saves time to do it this way now we'll talk about the bevel settings box so we'll go into bevel and we'll extrude it outwards and we'll give it a negative amount for the outline and we'll just look at our um, options for bevel type again so by group as a local normal or by polygon okay next let's talk about inset inset we select a polygon and click and drag and it creates an inset so we can extrude that or we can create an inset as a group or by polygon again okay next let's talk about chamfering so we'll go into vertex sub object mode and what we'll do is we'll hit the chamfer settings box and let's do five okay so you can see what that did you can also chamfer edges so let's select all the top edges then we'll go into our chamfer settings box for the edge sub-object mode and we'll give it a good amount of chamfer and the cool thing about edge edges when we're chamfering them is we have segments so we can keep on curving that over okay and I know this is probably getting really long and boring so I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here I think I've covered the main things you're gonna do in modeling not all of them but uh, sorry for the anticlimactic ending but I should have a new tutorial coming out soon on modeling an actual object or say a character and uh, you guys won't be too bored with that one so take care and goodbye